Good afternoon, ladies and gents, and welcome to episode 176 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilace, coming live from YouTube today. And this is a special one, not only because it's an interview, but it's the first time we've got somebody coming back. So obviously, we didn't give him a hard enough time last time because he's back for more. Um, and I will I will do a, an introduction to him straight away so that we can just get going. But I will also explain why it is that we're actually uh featuring this very special guest in the studio today. It is none other than Geza Schoen of uh, Eccentric Molecules, live from Berlin. How are you doing, Geza? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, all well. You know, it's Friday, so that's always good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Thanks, man. Uh, fantastic. Thanks very much for taking the time to join us to talk about these guys. I will explain what they are in a moment. I can see lots and lots of comments coming through. So, um, do feel free to say hello and tell us where you're watching from. You may have questions for Geza. I would say if you possibly can, just hang on to the questions for a few moments because if you post them now, then I may miss them later on. But I will tell you when it's okay to ask a few questions and hopefully we will have time to take a few questions from you. So I'm gonna do the, the, the selling bit now, just so we get it out of the way really quickly and we can actually start talking in detail about why it is that we are here today. Trying, trying to keep this really simple. You would think that this is simple, Geza, but some people seem to find this still so confusing. In 2006, Geza Schoen and some other people launched this brand, Eccentric Molecules. They launched a perfume or a product called Molecule One and a perfume called Eccentric One. Molecule One was just one single aroma chemical, one ingredient. It was ISOE Super, nothing else in it but ISOE Super, so Geza tells us. Eccentric One was a perfume, a fully composed perfume with other ingredients, with ISOE Super being the central ingredient in it. ISOE Super, we could say, is a central ingredient to many of Geza's releases, but that was the idea. And then we had these pairings. So there was always a pairing of just one molecule on its own, and then a perfume built around that molecule. And we've got five of those now. Last year, we had the release of Molecule 05 and Eccentric 05, which were based around Cashmiran. So Molecule 05 was just Cashmiran on its own. Eccentric 05 was a perfume based around Cashmiran. And now, just to make it even more confusing and just to confuse the poor sales assistants around the world and everybody watching and listening, we have the launch of a new sub collection, a branching off range called Molecule Plus or M Plus. So we go back to square one, we go back to ISOE Super, but now in each case, we link ISOE Super with a different natural. So we have um, Molecule One Plus Mandarin, Molecule One Plus Iris, and Molecule One Plus Patchouli. We're at the three minute mark. How's that? Not that That's a pretty succinct explanation. What do you think? Do you approve of the explanation, Geyser? Um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking to some uh, some visitors. No. Um, <clears throat> so, so yes. We're okay. We we've explained it all. Perfect. So actually, we don't need to do the interview now because I've just. <laughs> <laughs> but but obviously, we want to ask you about it now. Um, I want to get maybe the most controversial question or statement out of the way first. So I'm a little bit wary of this because usually what you like to do in an interview is kind of warm the interviewee up before you kind of hit them hard with something. But I think you can take it. And I think I think um I think I I think you will give us an interesting response. Way back in 2006 when you released um Molecule One Eccentric uh, One, I'm sure you must have been aware that a lot of people said what is this guy doing? This is cheating. You can't just take one molecule and put it in a bottle. Not only has he taken just one molecule, but he's taken a molecule that so many people love. It's a much loved molecule, da, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so now it feels like you want to have your cake and eat it too, because not only are you taking that same molecule that so many people love, you're linking it with just one natural. And in each case, a very popular natural Lots of people love patchouli, lots of people love iris, lots of people love mandarin. So how would you respond to the statement that yet again you're cheating and you're taking the easy <laughs> route, you're taking the easy route out? <laughs> I, I, well, if there would be something sort of written in stone that you can only and always will have to, you know, put anything you do perfumistically into a coat of a certain system then i would agree but it's not like that you know no one has ever said a fragrance has to look like this or like that otherwise it isn't the fragrance 
I'll tell you probably best when um, this whole idea came up, which was when um, my partner Sophie, she, whenever I would show her some fragrances um, and whenever there was an iris note in them, she always loved them. So at some point I said, you, you, you know, you do have a sweet spot for iris, don't you? And she said, yeah, it might be, but I don't know what iris is like. So I showed her some iris ingredients and she absolutely loved them and said, yes, I like that. So and then she said, you know, why don't you lazy bugger just make me an iris fragrance? And I said, sure, you know, why not? Uh, let me try. And so I thought, how am I going to do this? I mean, the traditional way would be iris, you know, would be always put out next to other florals, fresh, fruity, spicy, the usual spiel. And I thought, no, 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 iris is such a subtle note. And especially this one particular uh, Iris Absolute Palida from IFF I was using, which is hideously expensive, but equally gorgeous. So I thought to make this shine, I can't put too much else in there because I'm here asked to do an Iris fragrance. So I can't make an Iris fragrance with Jasmine, tuberose, orange floss, so the whole thing. I said, so let's stay simple here. And you know, the one ingredient I obviously know best is IC Super. And so I took an, a big chunk of that um, and made my own iris base where iris absolute palida plays the most important role next to a couple of other ingredients I used to make a round iris note I, I liked. Then I added it to it and there's a little bit of freshness as well, but it's basically an iris on its own surrounded by some carrier ingredients but most important was that you will actually smell the iris note. So I gave her my, uh, one of the first accords and she started wearing it and she was just inundated with compliments. People stopped her on the street. They said, you smell great. What is that? In her office, people said, God, you've got a new perfume. What is that? So this continued. And I, th the moment I sort of realized myself was when she, she would leave the house, I would bring a little daughter to the kindergarten come back and she just must have left a few minutes ago. I was able to smell it on the street, in the elevator, on the way to our flat, and it was just in the air. So the projection was amazing. It smelled so good and so sophisticated. I sent a sample to my boys in London. I said, listen guys, can you just look at that? I think we, we must do something with this. And they had similar experiences, got lots of compliments. And this, this was the starter for M+, just because when I looked at the formula, it was just a big chunk of IC Super next to an Iris Accord. So M plus Iris, if you like, was born. And that got us thinking to do a little more than just that. So you said a lot of things there. Thanks for the explanation. A lot of things there that I want to unpick. First of all, the, the, the marketing around of this, the advertising around this would, would like us to go with this very simple idea that it's Molecule one, ISO E super plus a natural, but you already have talked about carrier ingredients. And just before we started recording, you were talking to me about the Mandarin saying that there are other things in there. So, so these are not actually just ISO E super and uh, Iris Absolute, for instance. No. What, what, what are carrier ingredients? Well, th that would not have worked as well, I think, than to actually touch up the Iris note in it, for example. So I've used, I think my iris base consists of like three, four ingredients. Um, obviously the iris absolute palida is the absolute star in it. Um, this is something the industry just wouldn't use just because it's too expensive, um, which is never a, a hindrance for us. How, how expensive, sorry to interrupt Geza, how expensive is expensive? Well, how much is a kilo of this iris absolute? A kilogram of iris absolute palida costs 50,000 euros. Okay. Um, That's expensive. Yeah, I think there for sure there will be some oud qualities which are more expensive, but I don't really get the beauty out of oud as much. So um, anyway, I interrupted you. So you were saying you you've got your iris base. So the idea still was nothing was meant to disturb the actual iris note. So the few other ingredients I touched up my iris accord where just for example, there's a little bit of bergamot in there to have an instant entrance into the fragrance. I mean, bergamot, you know, mustn't say about it, but it's like well known for, for the use in fragrance. And it just creates this little entrance before you then have this full iris note right in front of you. But if you look at the formula, there's not even nine or 10 ingredients in it. 
that's it. So it still is for me molecule plus iris. Of course, that's my interpretation. If you were to give this to some other perfumer, he probably would encounter this differently. But, you know, hey, I, I happen to be the one behind this. So um, it's, it's my law here. Yes, and, and and you gave me a similar response to that question last time when we spoke, and 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 I guess um, it's a question. I, I don't know. Would you say that it that the, the doing taking this approach is justified by the fact that people seem to respond to it, that people like it? Yeah, so, of course. Okay, that's the that's always for me the the only driver I really have uh, in front of my head when it is about you know does the world need another fragrance? No. Clearly not. We have seen hundreds and thousands, many thousands of fragrances over the past few decades. Um, there is pretty much everything out there and some things have doubled, tripled and duplicated themselves more than 10 times. So I always only feel if we do something new, there must be really reason for it. And I must say um, this reaction we got for um, Sophie's Iris fragrance that was priceless and that, that was just something where I thought this really smells damn good we must do something with that it's not just her private fragrance uh, we must give that to people and that's where it all started it must smell good and ideally it must smell better than what I've seen in the market got some comments here we've got Greg watching from Vietnam saying where is saying wearing eccentric o2 appreciate your innovation and willingness to buck the trend and uh, there was another one that I wanted to bring. Yes, Cole saying, hello, a nice concept from eccentric molecules. And this is interesting. Time to mask up is saying, this will probably be a soapy iris, but that's not a word that comes to my mind, actually. The, it, it, the, the iris is the one that I thought I would be drawn to the most when I uh, first got the samples. And as it happens, it, 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 it is the one that I'm drawn to the most, but, it's the woodiness that I love about it. And I, I suppose that's not unexpected because of course Isoe Super is such a cedar-like wood note. Um, so did you just want to go with the woodiness or were you trying to sort of stop it from being uber woody? No, well, I mean, the, the, the soapy aspect I can see because probably some iris fragrance we have smelled there you know, as always, have so much other stuff around them that probably there will be some aldehydes or some some rosy ingredients which will always be used in soap. So therefore, this soapy impression comes um, comes to life. Um, most important for me was here when I started this iris note. I thought, what can I sit this next to? Obviously, yeah, I could have given her the iris base on its own, but that doesn't quite work. You need, I mean, in in traditional perfumes, iris works like. A harmonizer and a powderizer I would call it mm. if you have a good iris quality to a fragrance and you smell it with and without only then you can see the effect but the effect is mesmerizing it's velvety it's powdery it's in the air it's light it's unknown you know it's like it's not like a flower you, you know iris comes from the root and the root has to be stored three years very cold and very dark and only then these irons will come to life. So um, I was Which thinking- Which is partly why it's so expensive, isn't it? The amount of, it's so labor intensive and time intensive. Exactly. And yeah. you, you know, out of these roots, you don't get like 20% out of them. What mm. you can use is like, I don't know, one, yeah. two, three percent and that's it. So um, I was thinking, I want to keep the beautiful powderiness, obviously, of the iris. And what could I amalgamate this with? And then, it was just like a natural reaction. Well, I see Super is just omnipotent in its strengths and its capacity, the skills it has. It is already very radiant. It has a beautiful olfactoric smell. It is already something powdery and dry, but it is transparent and it doesn't go on your nerves. So I thought best to transport the iris note with is something which is equally, if not more transparent than iris. And so the accord from Iso is super, like a big percentage. I think there's like 70 or 75% in it, plus some Hedione, plus the Iris Accord. Hedione here, again, works like a transmitter. It, it, it helps get the fragrance in the air and make it more sympathetic and light and airy. 
the only thing you actually do smell in this fragrance more or less is the iris but it's mm. it's it's lifted on sort of like a transparent cloth if you like which lifts it in the air and helps it make obviously also modern because i i, I wouldn't encounter anyone so far who would say I see super and heady on smell a bit old fashioned, dude, you know? So no, 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 I would, I would, no, 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 absolutely not. So, so the concept continued, you carried on working on it at some stage, I guess you decided, you know, on the Mandarin, you decided on the patchouli. Now, M Mandarin is traditionally con called a, a top note. Iris is a middle-ish note and patchouli is a bass note. So we've kind of got top, middle and bass. I'm guessing that didn't happen by accident. No, it didn't happen by accident. Um, that's exactly what, at some point um, sort of came to my mind the the patchouli was the second one i was working on and that was fairly quickly that it became clear with that certain combination of ingredients um again you know you can always work on a fragrance forever and add things and take things out and change things and stuff but if i put something on someone's skin and watch this then for the whole day there's sometimes very little you can actually do with it you know sometimes paintings can go very quickly, but they're very expressive. And then you can work on a painting for probably for years, but then you might lose yourself. So I'm always keen to keep the moment when I see something is beautiful enough to actually keep it and not want to add more stuff. And otherwise that would have not gotten well with the, the, the concept of M plus, because then it would be M plus various, but it's M plus patchouli and it's M plus iris and nothing else. And these other ingredients I mentioned, they're really just helping the actual accord to come to life, but they don't bother the actual quality of the olfactoric smell of iris or here patchouli. So um, patchouli second, and then I noticed it. Yeah, actually, iris is a hard note. Patchouli is a bass note. So I thought a top note's missing. So then I looked into what we had done so far with the eccentrics, and we have been using um, some citrus notes in those as well but we've never really played with much with mandarin. And then if I look at, you know, you have bergamot, lemon, lime, grapefruit, mandarin, and orange. So these are the six, where's the camera? Six, six okay. citrus notes. Um, and mandarin was never really in there. So I started playing around with the mandarin and then IFF has got a, an absolute amazing mandarin oil quality, but um, the mandarin oil is by far the longest formula because yes, I used 12% of this beautiful mandarin oil, but mandarin oil itself is quite transparent and thin. It doesn't last very long and it's not very big in the air. So it's beautiful to smell, but it needed, I, I felt it needed some more aspects. So I was working on the instant zesty note of a mandarin, remembering like when you stick your finger into a mandarin and you start peeling it, there's this amazing flavorful aroma coming up that I try to strengthen um, with some traces of other ingredients. And for example, I also added, there's a touch of like jasmine sunbug in it, and there's a touch of orange flower absolutely in it, and a couple of other ingredients, but only always up to the point where you don't lose the beauty of the mandarin, and it doesn't go again away somewhere else where somebody could say, yeah, but I smell jasmine or this or that. So always trying to keep the note as the single partner here, and um, that's when, at some point, even the mandarin one was finished. I also tried to make it a little longer lasting because mandarin on its own, the oil, you know, after 10 minutes, it would have been gone on your skin. And, and absolutely, I think that's one of the notable things about this release is that, that that citrus note really does last quite a while from when I've worn it. And and also, it's, it's, it's really, really juicy. It's very, very edible. Now... Um, these are out, I believe, on the 23rd, so in just a few days' time, just in time for the start of spring. Is it true, Geyser, that you have said that there will never be a molecule 10, that we will stop at 9? So, we, we, I'm, we're going to play a little game. We're going to play a little game now where we watch your face very, very closely for reactions, because I guess if there's not going to be a 10, we only have 6, 7, 8, and 9 left. So I'm going to shout out some aroma chemical names and you tell me whether you, we may ever see them as a molecule release. And I'm going to go ethyl maltol. <laughs> no, never. And why? No. Okay, fine. Let's not go there. Saffroline. 
No, um, too singular, not pretty enough on its own, too special. Um, Ethel Malto, by the way, we must tell people that this basically is what makes Angel tick. And on its own, this smells like sugar candy. So um, no, not, not really big for sweets in general. Ethyl maltol, definitely not. Safralin before ethyl maltol, but also not, no. Okay, safralin is, for anybody who doesn't know, you can look all this up anyway, but it's a kind of saffrony, leathery note, I think is fair to say. Always makes me think of steamed rice, but then that's because of my sort of cultural association of rice with saffron. Um, <laughs> Calone. I mean, what a, no, this is like, these are the worst ingredients there are. I mean, I very rarely touch cologne for a fragrance. Sometimes it's very really neat, the aquatic note, and I get myself to use a couple of grams and a 10% solution, but I always at the end go, oh God, this smells awful. Um, same like I was trying for Eccentric 05 um, because the C note actually played a role in that because of the environment I was in. I tried it. Over and over, I tried cologne with Maritima. I tried Maritima on its own, cologne on its own. It always made it smell artificial. And that's not me. I don't want anything artificial in my fragrance. No, cologne, never. No. We've, we've got a question that I will answer straight away for somebody watching. Javanol has been done. Javanol was um, molecule 04. So do your homework before you ask questions, <laughs> but never, that's me being going into teacher mode. Javanol has been done. Um, and Javanol, I can smell through the packaging here next to me. It's that strong. Um, I'm, 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 I'm kind of glad that you're saying no to these because we can hold you to this and say, ah, oh, but you told us there wouldn't be a calone. But I'm still thinking there will have to be, I'm, I'm thinking there's got to be some kind of a floral one. So I'm going to say methyl ionone, which smells of violets for people who don't know. Yeah, well, first of all, there are loads of different qualities of that ingredient. And it's, it's one of these ingredients which I love, clearly, but it needs a combination with others. So you can really only get the best out of it next to other ingredients, which is why methyl ionone on its own, nah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't find that attractive enough, to be honest. Mm, but there was a bit of a, and I'm going to let somebody else ask here. I think I know the answer to this one, but you're saying linalol. <laughs> Again, <laughs> linalol is, I mean, look, it's one of the classics in perfumery, but because it's so singular with its effect and linalol is kind of like what makes flowers smell fresh. I mean, it's also in bergamot and lots of other natural ingredients. As much as I love it, it wouldn't be enough. You would spray it on and after 10 minutes, it would be gone. And people would think that's a hoax. So I love linalool, but not for a molecule. I had this one on my list from Gonzalo, geraniol. No, it's similar. Geraniol. It's similar to, to linalool. And it's, it's very fresh. Geraniol obviously defines, among others, the fresh part of a rose. Um, but it goes off too quickly. Uh, a molecule for it to qualify needs to have a lasting in it and it needs to be multifaceted. Geraniol is very linear as is yeah. linear oil. That, no. I'm going to ask one more. He's not going to tell us, is he, what, what six is going to be. What about coumarin? Uh, yeah, coumarin, I mean, coumarin would be enough to, it, it's long lasting, it's radiant, it's very complex but it's just too sweet and has nothing else to offer. If you look at the five molecules we've done so far, they all come into the woody, you know, into the woody area. And woody notes to me are by far the most sophisticated ingredients, um, which is why I, I, I have no, no goals in going really far away from that complex woody smell. So no, I'm afraid no. <laughs> Do you know what molecule six is? Have you decided? We kind of have decided, yet there is um, a kind of a logistic problem with this um, ah. that I will tell you after the show, but I, I will not let, I will not tell now. It, I probably would also cause a bit of an uproar, but um, look, I think if we do six, that's pretty good. I, I, molecule nine, I really don't see. Molecule eight, no. Um, 
if we were to do some more, it may be six, maybe seven, but I'm struggling already. And this is not because we're lazy or because we don't want to put out more. It's just, again, unless we feel that this actually also can be worn on its own and somebody could find that attractive, I'm not doing it. This is not, I, I don't find this necessary. I'd rather stop the series. No, that's cool. And seven is a good number as well, isn't it? Seven, seven, seven is, is, is a powerful number in many ways. I should say, because we only probably have about 10-ish minutes left of this interview, that you're watching Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise. And in the studio today, we have a perfumer, Geza Schoen, of Eccentric Molecules, talking mainly about the launch of the three additions to the Eccentric Molecule range. They come under the banner of M+. So it's Molecule 1 plus a different ingredient, as we've just been talking about. Please fire off your questions now if there are some questions you would like, Geza, and we'll try and get through as many as possible. And it's always really, really interesting for me and for the guests as well if you say where you're watching from, if you're allowed to reveal this confidential information. It's wonderful to know where it is that you are. I would like to branch out a little bit, Geza, because I was wondering if we could spend a couple of minutes talking about the B word. And by the B word, I mean Brexit. Now, I noticed that Eccentric Molecules products all have written all over them, made in England. But how has Brexit affected things for you and for the brand at the moment? Well, mostly so far, I I just couldn't travel to London. I couldn't see my, my folks, my partners, um, the people I work with which is a pain in the ass, I can tell you that. So I haven't been to England now for, I guess, one and a half years, where I would usually go, you know, every couple of months um, for meetings and to decide on what we want to do. Um, I, I, I put any, anything in the post these days and then talk to my partners on the phone or on Skype or whatever. Um, other than that, you know what? I wish we could talk even more about Brexit but that would only mean that we wouldn't have to talk about COVID. And I only, I almost like miss the days when we, when we only talked about Brexit, or I was just saying to a friend, you know, a few years back, we were only talking about Greece and the problems they had. And it seems like something, you know, I have, I almost feel like I have a longing for, for more like, if you like, banal problems in the world than, than this. So Brexit, yeah, I mean, Brexit is shit. Um, I don't know anyone who was in favor of Brexit and I, somebody really must try and tell to, you know, must try and explain to me why he or she thinks that Brexit was good. I think it'll create even more problems in the future. The, the figures only now already tell you that um, it's not good for the economy, for, for both sides, not good. And, you know, the people who have initiated that, I mean, they, they should go to prison, really. I, this is really stupid. And I hate I'll to see you, I'll you what, go. I'll tell you what was behind my question, because I'm already aware of some Europe-based brands who are having to drastically, drastically cut the number of perfumes that they offer in the UK because it is just not worth their while going through the new registration process that is required for a lot of the products. And as this is a UK-based brand, I was wondering if you found that it's become difficult to get your to, to get these perfumes into the EU. Or have you not come across that yet? Um, I mean, so far it was fine, but just recently, over the past few weeks and a couple of months, I heard that there were some problems because you can't send any longer as easily as you could do before. Um, that's a problem. Uh, I was waiting for my samples of M plus for like two weeks, which usually would take a day or two. Um, I'm sure they're going to solve this. Um, this just needs some time to to get used to, I think. If, there, if, if it would be a continuous problem, I'm sure we could also shift production to the continent. Well, yeah, which is which is all a whole interesting thing in itself. I've, I've seen a few questions coming up, uh, but first of all, you have a stalker, Geza. Tina is saying, watching from Berlin, and next time I see Geza on Tempelhofer Felt, like I did several times, I will greet him. I don't, I don't know where that is, but there you go. So say hello to each other. Say that Persil has introduced you. Um, a practical question here from Angela saying, is there going to be a travel size of these new ones? Ooh, that's a good question. I think, you know what? I mean, we feel strongly about M+, um, but we haven't even discussed this yet. So first of all, it's always like, you know, the fragrance need to get out there. If 
this becomes sort of like people really start liking those and you know this is really starting to roll then yeah we we could think about that i guess um but that's a second step M most important is the idea the idea needs to be in a bottle and the idea in a bottle needs to reach people and then everything from there i think maybe this one will make you laugh you're saying um molecule seven could be called brexit but built around civitone <laughs> Yeah, but then Civitone is great. I mean, I, I you know, Civitone is one of my favorite ones. There is um, Civitone in M plus Mandarin, by the way, tiny bit. Okay. Um, to give it a bit, give it a bit depth. Um, Civitone is is a great ingredient, yet it's very transparent and it doesn't have nowhere near the the dirtiness of Civit Absolu, for example. But um, Civitone. Civitone more likely than any of the other ones you mentioned before. Could happen. There you go. Well done, Jura. Does she, <laughs> if you use it, you have to send her a bottle. <laughs> I will. <laughs> this is why I have the best audience, you see. Everybody knows all this stuff so well here. And Tina's come back with saying, by the way, that there are massive problems in Germany getting perfumes from Britain, like Papillon Perfumery, stuck in customs. So as you say, Geza, hopefully, hopefully they will they will sort that out. Um, the woozy is asking a question here and saying sorry if this is a dumb question but are the molecules simply the molecule at a stable level and ethanol yeah i think i know the answer to that that is that is the case isn't it the, the, the molecules don't come in the same dosage every time um for example javanol you know you only need a few percentages and that's it otherwise uh, the, the house you're wearing it will explode so always at the level of their strength we've kind of i made tests with various dosages to decide which one to go for but yes there's the ingredient in it with alcohol and water and let's take one question from uh sailor boy has Geza used norlimbanol in any of his creations and how does he feel about it now my understanding is that that's a woody ambery type material yes yeah norlimbanol is one of the the classics when it comes to artificial woody boosters, I would call them. Um, there's loads more next to it. Um, every company has gotten their own ones, um, you know, Amber Extreme, Ambo um loads more. But um, I don't find it as interesting enough on its own. For me, it's more like sort of a weapon within a fragrance. Um, if you really want to boost the sort of the woody strong effect, which and also I find these synthetic woody notes um, mostly a little too. I, they don't have enough character for me. Like I see super has character, and even Kashmiran has character, and um, all the other ones we did as well. And they are just more multifaceted. And Nolimbanol, um, yes, of course I know it. I, I've got it here, but um, for some reason I've been, I've almost gone away from these synthetic woody boosters in my fragrances don't know why but using them less and lesser to be honest great thank you so much for your time gazer thanks to everybody for watching as i say these are out on the 23rd um we would be very happy to have you back anytime you want to come back it's a question of whether you find the <laughs> you find the experience enjoyable enough a, a, a final question to you from me um we haven't talked about the timing of this, about whether there is a particular reason why these were released now, but do you think the fact that they have a, a purity to them, a streamlined quality to them, uh, an unfussy quality to them, do you think this is maybe reflective of the fact that we're craving some kind of simplicity at the moment? Absolutely, not just only now. I always felt this for fragrances. I mean, this is probably why the molecular one idea, I thought, I'll just do it. You know, I, I, I knew the effect. I knew what people would love it. And it was just more than anything to, to break up this paradigm of, oh, fragrance has to be complex and it has to have a top note and a heart and a base and it needs to be, you know, tons of ingredients playing next to each other. And that's one way of looking at perfumery. And I don't mind that. That's the reason why I became a perfumer. And I still work on fragrances for other brands or, um, artists I'm working with and we need complexity sometimes because they want to tell a story and you can't really tell a story with just you know a bowl full of spaghetti but nothing else on top so that's why yes 
M plus, I felt, is a good in between. Um, yes, it's based on the old molecule we know, but again, it offers simplicity. It's just molecule one, as you know it, plus one other aspect. If you are a patchy lover, you will have to try this out. I'm sure you will like it. If you liked Iris Note so far, I'm sure you'll fall in love with that because you can't have it more pure than this in a wearable shape. That's always very important, and that's why I feel there are no rules. Like you know, as it would be like the same to to tell an artist, you always take a brush, take some you know, take a, take a, an empty canvas, and off you go. And, and other than that, we don't accept. And this is just something we. I, I, I wouldn't even think about it. We just break this off and break it up and we do what we feel can smell sophisticated enough. Brilliant. And congratulations on their launch and 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 I hope they do well. I'm sure the ISOE super fans will will start layering them in all sorts of interesting combinations. But okay, we, we've got, we've run out of time. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Stay tuned to my social media for details of upcoming interviews and all the best to you, Gazer. Thanks very much for joining us. Any last words? Darius, thanks for having me. Always enjoy talking to you. It's lovely. It's thanks very absolutely much. Absolutely a pleasure and an honor. Take care, everybody. Bye.